Hello, students. Going to be lecturing over content from Chapter 12 today, and this is from Arkansas, a concise history textbook that I am currently using for the course. And <clears throat> the title of this chapter is Darker Forces on the Horizon, the Great Depression and World War II, 1932 to 1945. So let's start off talking about Arkansas during the Great Depression, okay? You have the flood of 1927 caused many rivers to overflow and really caused major setback for, setbacks for farmers. At this point, uh, farmers were convinced things couldn't get much worse for them, right? In 1928, uh, for the first time, Arkansas had someone from the state on uh, the ticket for vice president. And this was uh, Joe T. Robinson from Lone Oak, Arkansas. We talked about him a little bit uh, previously in another lecture. Robinson ran with Al Smith. For uh, uh, Smith is from New York. And uh, Robinson had caused some controversy in Arkansas because he was a wet, in quotes, uh, someone who opposed uh, prohibition. Okay, so you have this sort of big city wet versus rural uh, dry uh, divide in the state. Some Baptist ministers said to vote uh, for Hoover, the Republican, Governor Braw, uh, B-R-O-U-G-H. Uh, he went to El Dorado to speak on behalf of Al Smith. Uh, he favored um, open communion. Arkansas ends up uh, going for Smith, but the nation went for Hoover. Okay, now Hoover is highly respected uh, at the time, but he is not a great president and he does not deal with the problems of the Depression. Now, by this time, there were 100,000 automobiles in the United States, 527 separate road districts in Arkansas, but many of these roads stopped at county lines. Road building was a serious issue going on. It's something that was a reoccurring uh, theme in our state's history is uh, roads and infrastructure um, and, and the roads kind of uh, constricting travel. The stock market crash of 1929 is ignited, and this causes little concern for Arkansas because they were already having a hard time. Stock market crash wasn't necessarily... Uh, what caused the hard times in Arkansas. Uh, definitely times got bad, but um, issues were already bad in the state. Okay. Now, uh, 1929, 1930, um, the agricultural economy was on the verge of collapse. After the flood of 27, there was a drought, there was a boll weevil um, and <clears throat> infestation and insects, which feeds on uh, cotton took over. And it uh, devastated the cotton industry. <clears throat> All of these things were very difficult on our Kansans. That's why they didn't really notice it much when uh, the crash happened, because uh, times were already very hard. 1930 through 1933, uh, states were on their own. Federal government's unwilling to give direct relief to people who are falling on hard times. Hoover had private chair, uh, had private charity set up, but wasn't a, um, there wasn't a direct relief to states and people. He believed, uh, that there were cycles in an economy and it, this, his views on how to deal with this, um, did not, uh, improve the situation. Okay. Arkansas really uh, went without during this uh, 1930 and 1933 time period, and it was uh, pitifully uh, inadequate. There was zero hope Arkansas uh, would pay off state debt. In 1930, 100 banks in Arkansas closed. From 30 to 31, um, we had this economic issue and, uh, and also another um, – natural issue right so, uh, issue with nature arkansas is hit the hardest by drought sharecroppers are faced with famine and starvation people lost their farms to foreclosure prices fell out due to overproduction 
thousands of Arkansans are threatened by this. And the federal government is unresponsive. There was the mentality of if you were poor, uh, there was something wrong with you. The federal government didn't respond uh, with uh, food or skill. And 180,000 Arkansans uh, faced starvation. From 31 to 32, it wasn't just a cycle. This is, this is more. In 32, the average income of farm families is about $230. Unemployment was 30%. Um, I'm sorry, uh, 37%. Over 2,000 families used Red Cross services. Arkansans wasted nothing. People uh, bartered their clothes. Uh, people bartered their clothes were patched, and the state is uh, is facing bankruptcy. Schools are closing because they couldn't pay teachers. If you've ever read uh, John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, it represents uh, this time period, and also of mice and men uh, about a similar time. People uh, moving to California for a better life. Many Arkansans go back to living. Uh, <clears throat> in 19th century conditions during this, this time. In January of 1932, Hoover responds but offers uh, no relief to individuals. There uh, is a revival of bartering throughout the 30s and people began <clears throat> burying money, keeping it in their mattresses. Uh, and if a bank it failed, like those 100 banks I mentioned, then your money was gone. And many people, again, leave the state and head west. In 1933, taxes were delinquent on 10 million acres of land. Now, um, there is a uh, documentary that I like to show. Uh, it should be available on YouTube, Road to Rock Bottom. I'll make it available in the class. Um, and this kind of kind of, these would be kind of some, some notes from, um, that content. Okay. So, uh, economy is hitting rock bottom in Arkansas. People are riding in DC times are disastrous. Bank robberies are increasing, especially small banks. Now during this time was the appearance of pretty boy Floyd, an Oklahoman outlaw who becomes a legend. He's a robber and a killer, born in Georgia in 1904, moved to Oklahoma in 1911. He becomes a folk hero in Arkansas and Oklahoma, and even is known for hiding out in the Arkansas River Valley. Celebrated for uh, helping the poor, uh, he would uh, is alleged to have destroyed mortgage papers at banks he robbed, and he was very well dressed and is seen as a sagebrush Robin Hood by uh, many citizens at the time. Small towns loved him. Uh, he, he was smarter than most of your crooks at the time, right? Bank robberies increased not just by Floyd's doing. Um, this is ongoing. He knew farmers would uh, hide him for a few bucks, and he ends up stealing as much as $12,000 in five months' time. And outlaws and gangsters are becoming more prominent, not just in the South. This is across the United States. Pretty Boy Floyd robbed banks in Oklahoma, Missouri, and Ohio. He's accused of killing six men, um, at least. And there's a manhunt for him. Uh, they had... Uh, tracked him down using the telegram system. Uh, he was shot twice by FBI agents and dies 15 minutes later, denying any involvement in this infamous Kansas City massacre where some police officers had been killed. That was uh, what he was talking about with his dying breath. Land prices dropped during this time. Uh, drought, months without rain in 1930. Arkansas is hit very hard. Temperature was 100 degrees or more. Hoover's turning to the Red Cross. The Red Cross uh, at this time has a political nature to it. 
Uh, people got seeds from the Red Cross, but Red Cross gardens dried out and failed. Red Cross runs out of aid and people face starvation uh, with little awareness of these issues in Washington. Late November, there began uh, to be food distribution bosses telling them how many families they were um, that were living and working there, right? In December of 1930, there is a call for the federal government to feed people. $45 million is allocated for seed and animal feed, but not for starving families. By January 3rd, 1931, the Red Cross is broken down and there are no more, uh, there's no more food for three days. Starvation filled the states. Huber didn't want um, everything happening to look bad on him, and he denied people were starving. He wouldn't give food because he couldn't believe that people were really starving. Okay. Joe T. Robinson uh, asked for $60 million for aid from D.C. This didn't happen because Huber didn't believe that it was needed. So just uh, a very serious issue with him not recognizing what was going on. 500 Arkansas tenant farmers stormed the town of England demanding food. The next day, the front page of the New York Times reads, 500 farmers storm Arkansas town demanding food for their children. Here's some quotes. Our children are crying for food and we're going to get it. We're not beggars. We will work for any amount if we can get it. We're not going to let our families starve. Farmers dispersed uh, the food, took it home, uh, and there was no violence. It was portrayed as a riot or rebellion, however. The England food riot stands out as a cancerous abscess is one headline. And one... um, individual lawyer called the Capitol during this going on saying there are hundreds of farmers, uh, give them what they need or they will take it. Let's talk about FDR. So we talk about how Hoover's dealing with things, not very effectively, right? Um, FDR and the new deal In 32 FDR is elected to office uses politics and attempt to provide relief to Americans. For example, uh, uh, Keynesian economics, This is a theory that said you could spend your way out. Don't spend less, spend more. Put money into the economy. The Arkansas governor and old planner class saw the depression as being brought on by modernization. In 1935, Arkansas put nothing in relief programs, causing the federal government to threaten to cut them off. First state sales tax and sin tax are created at this time. Social security is passed and states are looking to Washington for support. The new Arkansas governor, Carl Bailey supported the new deal. Uh, The agricultural adjustment act. This was established to stop production and boost prices. $120 million uh, is distributed to cotton planters. One million contracts go to cotton planters, landlords, uh, which are supposed to share with tenants and sharecroppers. Socialist Norman Thomas. um, uh, Then we have uh, Clay East and H.L. Mitchell visiting Arkansas in February of 34. East and Mitchell are advised to form an organization for sharecroppers. And only one white and seven black men attend the meeting that is called and no guns are allowed the southern tenant farmers union now delta towns had outlawed gatherings 1000 members uh, joined the stfu in the first year planners evicted suspected members and uh mitchell and wallace side with the planners Arkansas Senator Joe T. Robinson passed New Deal projects. Sharecroppers didn't vote. 
The Wagner Act uh, granted federal protection to organized unions. This excluded agriculture. And landlords continued to terrorize tenants through punishment and intimidation. By December of 1935, 100 members in the Southern uh, Southern Tenant Farmers Union are ordered off planters' land. In Earl, Arkansas, local meeting edge church is broken up and two are killed. 251 tenant farmers uh, camped on Missouri highways, uh, and the STFU is almost gone at this time. Now, let's get into talking about Arkansas during World War II. I'm going to talk to you about the thesis, some of the ideas of historian Morton Sosna. He declared in his um, presidential address to the Southern Historical Association in 1982 uh, that World War II, rather than the Civil War, is the most crucial event in Southern history. Okay. So he's saying that World War II was more impactful than the Civil War. Now, his definition of crucial meant changes. Were there significant changes that occurred after the Civil War? We've already discussed the antebellum elite surviving the Civil War, Civil War intact and in control. Uh, and the status of African Americans only briefly improved after the Civil War. And the labor-intensive plantation economy survived the devastation of war and defeat. Sosna argues that World War II uh, was what truly made the South change due to large infusions of capital in the form of military spending. This money poured into the South, stimulating the Southern economy. The New Deal and regional affirmative action programs give advantages to groups that were historically disadvantaged. 40 to 44, the war years, 10 largest recipients of uh, war contracts received the same amount of money that the New Deal spent between 32 and 39, 52 billion. GM alone received more than was spent on New Deal programs in 1936. Sosna dismisses the impact of the New Deal Uh, But uh, they did cause a shift in crops and mechanization that began changing labor systems in the South. Now, again, Sosna sees World War II as a watershed in Southern history, a real turning point prior to World War II. um, The South was known as the benighted South. This means morally and intellectually backward or ignorant. And the South uh, has a number of economic issues going into the war. And three things that happened, okay? The institutional transition from slave labor to, th- to free labor did not fundamentally alter the South as a plantation society after the Civil War. The South's economic problems are not a result of the Civil War or the consequence of emancipation. Some groups that dominated society and politics in the pre-Civil War era Uh, or who dominated it in the post-Civil War era. There was continuity with the past, not a break, and the Southern way of life continued. Okay, so that's that's, that's Sosna's thesis. There are more jobs and higher wages in this time. There's a breakdown of paternalism. White elites had uh, looked at black and white tenant farmers as children. It was the acceleration of black uh, outward migration. Uh, they're migrating out of the South to places like Chicago, Oakland, and Detroit. And World War II really breaks down the isolation of the South. Southern boys went to fight and experienced culture shock, and Yankees came to the South to train for the war. One third of 12,000 Americans um, spent time at Southern bases. The war started uh, many people thinking about the world differently, especially in the South, okay? The armed forces are the first institution to integrate. Arkansas had uh, two major camps at this time, Fort Robinson and Fort Chaffee. Many towns flourished because of the war. 
health improved, infant mortality declined, farmers seen increase in production and income, 55,000 total Arkansans enlist. The rejection rate is actually 43% due to physical educational defects. During the war, rationing and bond drives take place in the state. Arkansas is number 12 in the union for the purchase of bonds. Racist clubs form uh, touting slogans like slap a jap. Um, five or six congressmen at this time are freshmen. Arkansas got only 1.16 of the national defense budget. Soldiers were changed and hardened after returning from the war, and they had a broadened view of the world, having left their innocence in Europe. World War II in Arkansas domestically, um, we see this diluting of an institution. We see a social impact on families. Now, the Victorian ideal had been alive and well in Arkansas. Strong fathered paternalism was under attack by the war. Women uh, were outside the home during the war. 80,000 women worked non-agricultural jobs in 1943. Some other things going on. Uh, there's a jump in venereal disease during the war, which makes it a crisis. Social hygiene day is created. VD is portrayed as a threat to the war. In Little Rock, people were detained and inspected if they were suspected carriers of the dreaded social disease. Juvenile delinquent age uh, is 14 for boys, 15 for girls. In 40, uh, 1941, there are 124 cases. In 1942, there were 116 cases. There's a rise of victory girls, which are these very young prostitutes who needed money. And the reason for all this is fathers and mothers are gone. Fathers are at war. Mothers are at work. There are 13,000 cases of syphilis and 3,500 cases of reported gonorrhea. No action is taken in relation to the venereal disease or syphilis. And a stereotype is created that only Negroes have syphilis. That becomes very prominent. Admitting this issue would be uh, an insult to the women of the state. There's a quick divorce law. A divorce can be granted in three months. Marriages are also made quick and easy. In Hot Springs in 1940, there's one divorce per day. State tried to slow the divorce trend, but uh, there was opposition by county treasurers, clerks, and divorce lawyers. The legal marrying age was raised from 16 to 18 for men and 14 to 16 for women, and you could obtain a divorce in a single day. Men found it impossible to accept the fact that the wife is bringing in the money and their role in society had been changing. 1945, there are some changes. Stiffer punishment for child abandonment. Marriage licenses uh, have a waiting period of three days. However, things would never go back to the way they were. During World War II, there uh, is a forced uh, relocation of Japanese Americans to internment camps. Uh, George Takai is one of uh, a famous celebrity that's in the original Star Trek series and is, is, I believe, carrying the torch in the next Olympics, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But it, look into George Takai. He was one of these uh, Japanese Americans who was taken uh, and put in these internment camps. Now, the United States felt they had to get these people away from the coast, and thousands of families are moved into the interior to camps at Jerome and Rower, Arkansas, 110,000 total people. These camps had barbed wire, armed guard towers, and guns pointing at them at all times. These are American citizens, some which had now been in the United States for three generation now, uh, generations. Now they live in concentration camps. Uh, and this is part of the unfinished struggle with race. Location of camps in southeast Arkansas was the poorest region in America uh, and bordered the Mississippi River. Swamps, disease, and hunger are common themes here. Jerome and Rower div uh, were divided by race in many ways. Uh, the world had just passed the region by. 
Uh, now, the Issei, Nisei, and Sansei. The Issei were the first generation Japanese immigrants who came to the United States. They made money, sent for their families, uh, organized into neighborhoods, often farmers, businessmen, fishermen. The Nisei were second, uh, Jap they were Americans from birth, they're second generation, and they were educated American. The Sansei is the third generation. Didn't matter what generation you were from, you were going to be taken to these camps. Fear and hatred of Japanese Americans soars during this time, and racial stereotypes of them being untrustworthy and devious are very prominent, and they were seen as potential collaborators. In February of 1942, the executive order that, inst that gets this going is uh, Executive Order 9066 by FDR. It's ordered all Japanese Americans to register and leave their homes. One thing for um, you to look into that was uh, definitely a game changer for agriculture, and uh, it's looked at in a few different ways, but uh, look into the uh, rust cotton picker, right? rust cotton picker this is an invention that changed arkansas and causes a second emancipation uh, it starts in 1927 and really changes an area that when you looked at it you couldn't tell um what year it was except for the power lines right and the the rust cotton picker by john rust really does uh transform the south it is patented in 33 and um it definitely uh, is, is something that I want you guys following along with the course and the lectures to all look into. There's an article about it on the Arkansas Online Encyclopedia. Okay, that concludes our Chapter 12 lecture for today. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon.